have your Bibles tonight, please turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. We'd like to read from 1 Peter chapter 1. We began studying here this morning about the subject of faith, F-A-I-T-H, the importance of faith. And the Word of God describes faith as being of much more value than of gold that perisheth. And when we were going through the storms of life, we just sang, where well, David had picked out a shelter in the time of storm. When we're going through the storms of life, we need to know that Jesus is a rock in a weary land. We need to know the Lord is my shepherd. We need to know that God has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We need to be able to feel the presence of God with us when we go through the storms of life. And we need to understand that if we don't exercise our faith in God, if we depend on ourselves or we depend on anyone else to try to help us, then we're going to come up short. We're not going to make it through the storm. Our souls can perish, not talking about dying and going to hell, but there are many of God's dear children that are living in a hell here on this earth because they haven't exercised their faith, they haven't trusted in God, they haven't looked to God for the strength and the grace and the wisdom that they need and therefore they make many wrong decisions and as they make those wrong decisions they find that they can no longer find that shelter in a time of storm and they have a trouble and problems of life and they get weak and weary and faint because they can't feel the presence and the help from God. Those of the people of God that do walk with the Lord and try to serve the Lord, their faith gets stronger and stronger and their confidence in God gets much stronger. I would hope that your faith in God is much stronger today than it was five years ago. I would hope that your faith keeps growing The Old Testament tells us about some of the children of God. Scripture says they were children in whom is no faith. Their faith was just dried up. Then the Word of God speaks about Jesus calling, telling his disciples, O ye of little faith. Sometimes we have no faith. Sometimes we have little faith. And then on some occasions we have great faith. And we need to pray that God will help us to have great faith in that Our faith would always be in God, not in men, but in the things of God and in God himself. The word of God gives us many reasons that we know that we can trust in God. God is omnipotent. God's all powerful. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. We're living in a weary land. I know that things are terrible in America today, but did you know that in every generation there have been major problems that the children of God have had to face. All the way back to the beginning of this world, there have been problems the children of God have had to face. In all ages of the world, the children of God have needed to exercise their faith in God. God gave us faith, and as we exercise that faith, our faith can become much stronger. And we'll better be able to, to withstand the fiery darts of the devil. We can take the shield of faith, and we can... When he's shooting those fiery darts, we can overcome the temptations of the devil. But without faith and without exercising our faith, we won't be able to do that. So I'd like to read tonight from 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. The word of God says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What had happened to their faith when Jesus died? What had happened to Peter's faith? All hope was lost. It was all over. And now we have the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Peter's praising God because they have been begotten again into a lively hope. That word hope means confidence in God. They'd be gotten uh, again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 4 says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, 
who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now listen carefully, beginning in verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through the manifold temptations. Now, Peter's writing about sometimes you're in heaviness. You never ever felt that you were in heaviness, that you were burdened and you were under a dark cloud and you had a, a lot more problems than you felt like you could stand. And he says right now you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, and that's what we often have to experience in our lives is trials of our faith. The Word of God teaches us that all suffering is because of one of three things. All suffering is either because of our evil doing, and that suffering is God's judgment in our lives because of evil doing, or we're going to be suffering for well doing, that's when you're doing what's right, and men are going to persecute you because you're doing what's right, but God's going to strengthen you. So you're either going to suffer for evil doing, or you're going to suffer for well doing, or you're going to suffer as a trial of your faith. And that's what he's talking about here, is suffering as a part of our trials of our faith. He says that the trial, verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Now, it's not the trial that's precious. That phrase, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, is referring back to that one word, faith. Faith is the thing that is of much more value than gold that perishes, though it, faith, be tried with fire might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving, now listen carefully to verse 9, it's directly connected to verse 7. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. He's not talking about eternal salvation right here. Jesus Christ saved us eternally on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. And he saved us body, soul, and spirit eternally when he died on the cross. But our souls need saving as we go through this life and we're having these trials of our faith and we're having these manifold temptations and we're having all kinds of problems if we're not exercising our faith we're going to become downcast and discouraged and despondent that happened to David a number of times in his life and sometimes David exercised his faith and he was full of faith and he was strong in the Lord and in the power of God's might when he went against Goliath, he said, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he's going to deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. He wasn't afraid of Goliath. His faith was strong when he went against Goliath, but he was laying hold on the way God had already blessed him in his life. And you and I as a people of God, our faith needs to be stronger and stronger as God gives us the strength and the grace that we need when we face problems and troubles. Our faith ought to get stronger and stronger. And we need to go back and lay hold on those ways that God has helped us in days gone by. And say the same God that helped me back there is fixing to help me again. David's faith was strong right there. But on other occasions David's faith got weak. You will turn in your Bibles to Psalm 42. Let's listen to, to an occasion where David's faith was weak. In Psalm 42, <clears throat> verses 5 and 11, David talks about how weak his faith was. And when his faith was weak, there was something that was cast down. Do you remember what it is that was cast down when our faith is weak? His, it's a four-letter word, what is it? 
His soul was cast down. Now when your faith is strong, you experience the salvation of your soul. But when your faith is weak, your soul is going to be cast down. In uh, Psalm 42 and verse 5, look at what David says here. He's talking to himself. Listen, if you're smart, you're going to talk to yourself sometimes. If you don't ever talk to yourself, if you don't ever try to straighten yourself out, if you don't talk to yourself and say, you know you're not doing what's right. If you don't talk to yourself, if you don't examine yourself, you're going to really mess up your life. So David talked to himself. And that's what he's doing right here. Partially talking to himself, partially talking to God. <clears throat> he says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Is he talking to his soul? To his soul? Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. You know what that word hope thou in God means? That word hope in God means the same thing as trust in God. It means the same thing as wait on the Lord. It means the same thing as have faith in God. Hope thou in God. Be confident in God. He's talking to his soul. <laughs> his soul was cast down. He says there's no reason for you to be cast down. It's not right. For you to be cast down when your soul is cast down. When you're discouraged and despondent. When that's going on in your life. You're not exercising what? You're not exercising your faith. And what will happen to your soul if you don't exercise your faith? Your, your soul will go right down to the pit. But when you do exercise your faith. 1 Peter 1.9 tells us that the end of us exercising our faith is the salvation of our soul. When I exercise my faith, I can save my soul. Does everybody understand that? If you don't believe you can save your soul and save other people's soul, and again we're not talking about eternal salvation. James 5.19 and 20 says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. I need to be saving souls. The scripture tells us in the book of Proverbs, he that winneth souls, that word winneth is the same thing as saved. He that winneth souls is wise. Whenever you see people that are, their soul is cast down, what's David doing right here? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? If you ever see me cast down, discouraged, and despondent, you need to come to me, and you need to try to save my soul. You need to say, where's your faith? What happened to the faith you used to have? What happened to your confidence in God? What happened to your trust in God? Do you not have any faith anymore? Is your faith weak? Well, then by the grace of God, let's ask God to strengthen your faith so that your faith can be strong and you can face the problems of life and that you can get rid of that fear and anxiety that you're having in your life. Faith will drive fear out of your life. So he says, why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. You know what a countenance is? Countenance the physical appearance. And, and whenever you see God's face, you're going, you're, you know what happens when you see the countenance of God? You know what happens? You're lifted up. You remember when Moses went up on the... Uh, mountain and was given the Ten Commandments and he came down off the mountain and the countenance of God had shined upon Moses and he came down off the mountain and his countenance was so bright the people couldn't stand to look at him. I'll tell you brethren there are some of the children of God they've been so close to God that when you look at them you can see the glory of God radiating from their lives. And the word of God tells us here that David is saying, I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. When God will smile on us, when God will manifest himself to us, we're going to be lifted up. We're going to be rejoicing. So we need to say to our soul, you need to talk to your soul. Don't be cast down. There's no reason for you to be cast down. You have a heavenly father that you have a heavenly father that loves you more than all the rest of the people that love you in this world. 
You have a father that loves you. You have an elder brother, Jesus Christ, who loves you so much that he gave his life for you. Yeah. Our Heavenly Father gave his son for you. Now, I would give my life for you. I'd give my life, I think, for every person in this congregation. I'd give my life for you. I would be very hesitant to say I'd give my son's life for you. Right. I want you to think about the love of God. That he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And God's love doesn't fluctuate. My love fluctuates. You know, the more I'm around people that I love, the more I seem to love them. And then I can be away from them and, and not see them for a long, long time and see them again. And that love is rejuvenated. It's that I see their countenance and the glory and the love and the fellowship is reunited. It causes us to be rebonded. And it causes us to be encouraged. I love to come to the house of God because when I see you and I see the glory of God and the countenance of God from you, you know what it does to my soul? It lifts up my soul. I think that's one of the reasons God established the church. It's for us to worship God, yes. But it's also for the people of God to be a blessing to each other. And I'll tell you, brethren, it helps us. You can have a congregation of 100 or 150 people and at any point in time there may be 25 of that congregation that's way down in the valley and you're probably going to have 25 to 50 of them that are way up on the mountaintop and you're going to have the other ones uh, just kind of lallygagging around here and there up and down you know what you need you need to get close to those that are really close to God because their countenance will lift your countenance I remember when I was real, real sick, and I would begin to feel a little better, and I'd see somebody, and they'd say, boy, you look sick today. I'd think, man, I sure didn't need to hear that. I thought I was doing better. Maybe we want to go home and go to bed. We need to encourage one another. We need to lift up one another. We need to pray that God will help us, that our soul would not be cast down. You can't lift up the soul of others if your soul is down in the pits. But if your soul is on the mountaintop and the glory of God is being manifest toward you, you then can give others encouragement and strength in their lives. You can help their faith be strong. You can remind them of what they ought to be remembering. And then their faith will be strengthened. And then their soul will be saved. You hear what I just said? <laughs> when their faith is strengthened, their soul will be saved. The end of your faith is the salvation of your soul, is what 1 Peter 1, 7 through 9 is talking about. Faith is important. Without faith, you can't please God, and without faith, your soul is going to go to the pits. David talked about that. He, he sometimes talked about how his soul had gone down to the pits. So three times, I want you to notice, I'm going to read all three of these because there's a little difference in each of them. Psalm 42, 5, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, trust in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. He said, I'm going to praise him, even though I'm cast down, even though I'm low, I'm going to praise him. Sometimes people come to the house of God, and they act like they don't have a thing in the world to be thankful for. You've got a lot to be thankful for, every one of us does. And you need to come into the house of God, Desiring to make a joyful noise to the Lord. You need to come into the house of God ready to worship God and praise God. Because every day God is loading us with benefits. And every time we come to the house of God we ought to be giving glory to God. And singing and making a joyful noise to the Lord. And children of the heaven of God ought to be singing praises to God. And singing praises to God helps to lift up your soul. Because the more you're singing praises to God and thinking about God, your faith is getting stronger. And the end of your faith is the salvation, salvation of your soul. I'm not going to read all this. I want to go to Psalm 31 just a moment. You go home and read Psalm 42, 5, Psalm 42, 11, and Psalm 43, 5. Those are three very similar but... A little different. Psalm 31 now. Look at Psalm 31 verse 24. <clears throat> Remember now we're talking about faith. We're talking about trusting in God. We're talking about having faith in God. We're talking about having hope in God. We're talking about having confidence in God. In Psalm 31 and verse 24 the word of God says 
And again, now David is writing here. He's in, he's in a different situation here. You know, you read one of the Psalms, you think, boy, David is strong. He is strong. His faith is strong. And then you read another Psalm, and boy, his faith is weak today. He's down in the pit. You know anybody like that? Sometimes our faith, you know, sometimes I think, I just feel so close to God. I just feel strong. I feel like I can fight the devil and all of his angels. And another time, I'm running like a coward. I think about Elijah, a man that had great faith. Uh, and we read about him in the New Testament. James chapter 5 talks about his faith. He prayed fervently. And it rained not for three and a half years. Because he prayed. He had great faith. And then the scripture says, And he prayed again for it to rain. And it rained. He prayed for it not to rain. It didn't rain for three and a half years. And then he prayed for it to rain. And it did rain. Now that's great faith. And the word of God is telling us about his great faith there. But I'll tell you what, you go back to the Old Testament and follow his life and you'll see, yes, there were days he had great faith and then there were other times, like when Jezebel got after him and said, I'm going to come get you. And what did he do? He not just ran and hid. He did run and hide. Lay down under that tree and Lord, just take me home. I just want to die. Where, where, how, how strong do you think? On a scale of 1 to 100, how strong do you think his faith was when he prayed for it not to rain for three and a half years? How strong do you think his faith was right then? I think 100, maybe 99 to 100. And then how, long, how strong do you think his faith was? And how was his soul? What was his soul condition when he prayed for it not to rain and it didn't rain for three and a half years? How do you think his soul felt right then? Wow, God heard my prayer. Look at this. This is amazing. I'm going to pray again now for it to rain and boom, God caused it to rain again. How, do you, how strong do you think his faith was right then? Oh, it's on the mountaintop. But then you find Jezebel getting after him and he just wants to lay down and cry and just wants to die. You ever been there? Living on the mountaintop? Ever down in the valley? It all is a direct result to the degree of faith we're exercising in our lives. And the end of your faith is the salvation of your soul. You got a weak faith? Your, your, your soul is headed downhill. Strong faith? <clears throat> you're going to be able to overcome the temptations of the devil. Psalm 31, 24. <clears throat> what kind of courage are you going to have when you're strong in faith? You're going to have good courage. There you go. Psalm 31, verse 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that <clears throat> hope in the Lord. Not hope in the Lord, trust in the Lord, have faith in God. All those phrases are used interchangeably in the Scripture. All you that hope in the Lord, all you that trust in the Lord, all of you that have faith in God. He says, you're going to be strengthened. He shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Go with me to the uh, next page, Psalm 33. Psalm 33, listen beginning in verse 18. Please follow this in your Bibles. In Psalm 33, beginning in verse 18. And by the way, do you think, you think other people can watch your life and tell... What kind of faith you have? Do you think God is watching your life and watching your faith? Every day. And sometimes God will see your faith and he'll say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. Your faith was strong today. And then other days he'll see you and you've hidden your talent down in the earth there was no faith seen and he'll say to you cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth you know what happens when God casts me into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth and I go through that weeping and gnashing of teeth you know what happens when I finally am able to you know who I'm going to call on when I'm out there when he's cast me out and because of my ungodly ways of living you know what will happen 
Guess who I call on every time he casts me away? Guess who I call on? Call on the Lord. Do I make him any promises? Yes, I do. I promise him, Lord, if you'll get me out, if you'll help me one more time, I won't, I won't do that again. And I'll do pretty good for a while. And my faith will be strong when he finally has mercy on me. And I've been like the prodigal son. I've gone away and then I come back and I think, I'm not worthy to be called his son. But if he'll just let me be one of his hired servants, just let me do anything, I'll be anything if my father will just take me back. And then the father, instead of just making me a hired servant, he kills the fatted calf and he puts a ring on your finger and a robe on you and he lifts you up and you sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amazing grace. Teresa and I were talking on the way home as we were pulling out of the driveway of the church building. She said, you know, I'm amazed at God's grace Amen. that's manifest in our lives every day. Yeah. I'm amazed. And you know what it does when you look at God's amazing grace? You know what it strengthens? It strengthens your faith, which strengthens your soul. Very good. It strengthens your faith, which also strengthens your soul. In Psalm 33, beginning in verse 18, the word of God says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Upon the Some people don't believe you ought to fear God. But you know that? That's a common theology today. You don't need to be fearing God. Listen, brethren, the Old and New Testament tells you you better fear God. The Bible tells us the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. The Word of God tells us that our God is a consuming fire. God is love. God's mercy. God's full of grace. But God's also a jealous God. And we better be careful about how we act every day and whether or not we exercise our faith. So the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Have confidence in his mercy. Verse 8, 19 says to deliver their, hmm. Now if they've got hope in his mercy, they've got confidence in his mercy, he's going to deliver their what? Soul. Deliver their soul from death. Is he talking about? Dying on the cross so they can go to heaven when they die? No, he's talking about a daily salvation that we all need in our lives. My soul is cast down. I need you to save my soul. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Have you ever been in a spiritual famine? The scripture says that there will be a famine in the land. Not a famine of eating and drinking, but a famine of hearing the word of God. We have a famine. We have more food, more clothing, more shelter. We have more natural blessings than any people on the face of this earth. God's been good to us. But there's a famine in the land. And God is, God is not pleased with our nation. And even all these natural blessings are going to be taken away from us because we have stopped having faith in God and begun to have faith in men and in money and the things of this world. Verse 20 says, Our soul, after he says in verse 19, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine, our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield, for our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. What is that trusting in the Lord? That's called, give me a five-letter word, faith. Because we have trusted in the Lord and in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. To the same degree that we hope in you. To the same degree that we have faith in you. Bless us according to our faith in you. He's going to do that. He's going to bless you according to your faith. Let me just say a couple of things in closing. You know when Abraham was taking his son, God... Of course, Abraham is called the father of the faithful. And when Abraham was told by God, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, take him and offer him as a burnt offering to the Lord. I know there are a lot of different people that, that, that were called on to do a lot of different things. But I think that's the hardest thing God ever called on anybody to do was when God called on Abraham to take his son Isaac up on that mountain. And I would have slept till noon. I'd have, I'd have pretended like I was still asleep the next day because he was told to take him. 
You know what the Bible says that uh, Abraham did? He rose early in the morning, took off. <laughs> and he carried his son, he carried the fire, and carried the knife, and carried everything they needed to make a burnt offering. And as they're going along, the son said to the father, the son said, where's the offering? And in Genesis 22, 8, Abraham said to Isaac, God will provide himself an offering. Now, I want you to know, I'd like to preach all night about that expression, God will provide himself an offering. And then I would like to just preach on God will provide. You know what it took for Abraham to say, God will provide himself an offering. You know what it took? Great faith. And they went up and you know the rest of the story. If you don't, go home and read Genesis chapter 22. If you don't cry for joy when it's over, come see me because you've got a big problem. A beautiful, beautiful picture of a great man of faith. And then one other man of faith is in the Apostle Paul in Acts 27. You remember when they were on that shipwreck. Have you ever been on a I'm not talking about literal ship, but sometimes I feel like my life's on, on the, the ship's just being tossed to and fro. I'm not talking about being tossed to and fro with everyone in the doctor. I'm talking about sometimes your whole life just looks like it's being turned upside down. And, and your whole world is falling apart. And when you're in that kind of a situation, you need to do what Paul did on that ship in Acts 27. He called on the name of the Lord. All hope was gone that they would be saved. They were expecting to die. And then the Lord spoke to Paul and told him there was not going to be a single life lost on that ship. And here's the beautiful expression that Paul made there. In, in Acts 27, 25, he said, I believe God that it shall be even as he told me. Now my question to you tonight is, can you honestly, truthfully say, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Not just I believe in God, but I believe God. That it shall be, even as it was told me. You believe God's going to take care of you? Is your faith strong right now? It is now. Mine too. Mine is stronger right now and it's been in a long time after reading and studying all this subject. I pray that God will help us to understand the end of our faith is the salvation of our soul when our faith is strong. But if our faith is weak, our soul will perish. May God help us is my prayer for Christ's Amen. sake. Amen. When we walk with